even have 50 people to pray Jummah prayer. And alhamdulillah, one of our leaders, Hafuz Dulkarnain Vardari, he was, he's my age. He came to me and I wasn't, at that time I wasn't living in Staten Island, and he said, brother, we came, we need your help. I said, what can I help, what can I do? He said, we want to build a center. We, we, we're not looking to build a masjid. We want to build a center. And I looked at him. He, he was from my country. I said, what are, you, what are you talking about? Center. What do you want to do with a center? We don't even have 50 people to pray in a masjid. What do you need a center for? What I want to say is that we as Muslims, when we came to this country, I came 1983. We came to see the best of our time here. We came to see here beautiful things. We came to see here beautiful community. We heard it in TVs, newspapers, and we read it. But we never experienced it. When I came here, we didn't have nothing. I didn't even have a job. I didn't have anybody to tell me. But this brother didn't want house. He did not want a job. He wanted to build a school. Not only a masjid, he wanted to build a school. And a lot of people, including me, I said, we, Brother Dulkarnay, we cannot do this. How are we gonna do a school? We don't even, we cannot do, we don't have nothing. And when he wanted to buy this, this center, what he asked the community for, he was asking for $450,000. And he didn't want to get a mortgage. No, 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 no. He said, brothers, we want the money, cash. We want to pay these people here, and then we will build the school ourselves. None of us, wallahi, none of us believe that this is possible. And this is 12 years ago. And I said to my brothers, we were there, and I had like 10 or uh, 11 people in my house at that time. I remember like today. And he said, brother, don't go any further because you, uh, can you give me what you can give me? I said to my brother, can I have the checkbook? And I wrote a check. Wallahi, I thought I'd give him 1500 but he tells me now, and he showed me the check, it was $2,000. And I said, here is this. And I didn't give that, wallahi, I didn't believe that they're going to build a school. But I said, you know, these young, young, let them have fun. You know, what are you going to do? Now that I see it what happened, Wallahi brothers was the best thing I ever did in my life. Nothing worthy I ever did in my life is as important. Because I see and I lived to have the graduation of the high school last year. MashaAllah. And without the help of the community, right now you probably think, come on, these people talking and we are here. The most important is the community that supported us. That we thought is not going to happen. But they were there all the time. And then are the people who are trying. These people like you, like right now in Terbia School. They are trying, like these sisters that he mentioned, but there are so many that you will find out that schools are the best thing that you can do with the time. And education is the best thing that you can do in this life. Because through education, we can build communities, we can build leaders, and we can participate in every aspect in this country. In this country, when I first came, I, 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 I didn't know where to turn. And I was lost, to be honest. I didn't even speak not even a word of English. Whatever I turned was haram. When I was educated in my, in my country, my father used to teach me. We were, I was raised in communism. We didn't even, we didn't even have a message. 
We had a masjid, but was sitting there. We didn't learn too much. I started learning about Islam out of my country. So, what I'm trying to say, because we all think we're going to go back in our country and all of that stuff, forget about it, brothers. Brothers, our kids are born Americans. Okay? They are here. And this earth, this globe, all these planets are created from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for people. There is no difference between anybody. All humans are equal. And if we as Muslims do our job, there is no doubt that we are members everywhere we go. And we have friends everywhere we go. If we going to be harsh and tell other people that you know good and we are good and you are, we don't have, we don't, we are not here for that purpose. We morally, Muslims, mashallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us what to do. As a community, told us what to do. As friends, as with our neighbor, neighbors, makes no difference who is my neighbor. I have an Italian neighbor, I have a Jew neighbor, I have a... Wallahi, and I asked them, I asked the Italian, uh, one inspector came to my house one day, and I wasn't home. The Italian neighbor right across the street, he came and he said, what are you doing here? He said to the inspector, see the inspector. He's, the inspector said, what do you mean? Are you the owner? He said, no, but he's my neighbor. And I want to know, what are you doing here? And I came back home, but I talked to him. I said, listen, Santo, his name is Santo, he's an Italian guy. When you're not here, just let me know. I'll cut you grass. If somebody comes to your house, they can come to mine. Yes. I'll take you mail. And he, after a little while, he asked me, why you do this? He said, because that's what my religion teaches. My neighbor has to be safe. If he's not safe, that means I don't do my job. We all have to work towards being who we should be, not carrying our religion in our back, but carrying our religion in our hearts, and trying to be the best of the examples. When we speak, not like me, that I talk loud too much and everybody sometimes doesn't like it, but to be pleasant, so people like us. The way we speak, the way we uh, do conduct business, the way we raise our children. My kids, now two of my sons went to Islamic school, to Miraj Islamic school, and my daughter. Others are here in uh, Cherry Hill. The schools are, mashallah. But when my parents come and my relatives come from my country, Three of my kids speak Albanian, the other three don't speak Albanian. And now, I don't know what to tell my mother or my relatives, but I, I always come with an excuse, you know. I say, listen, they don't want to, they don't want, they want to speak only English. But they say, why Islam and Hussein and Sumayya, they all speak Albanian and they understand us, because now I don't want to tell them that they went to the school there. That's why they're not. In my school, not only that they learn religion, they know how to read and write Arabic, which I don't, but they learn my language. They learn my tradition. Our traditions are very beautiful traditions, every one of us. Makes no difference where we come from. One thing that I have to tell you, to have an Islamic school that will be, it's going to be a struggle for the community too. No way tuitions will cover the, the expenses. We went through for many years, and we still, now we are in the 13th year, the tuitions alone, because there are some students that they are excellent students, but they, their parents, don't make that much money to bring them there. And the tuitions never will cover what we have to 
do as an expense. All expenses will not be covered from the tuition. So the community has to be part of it, part of the struggle. After this, the next generation, though, is not going to be as struggle as we do. But if we want the rewards from this time that we are here, that's what we have to do. The best investment that we could give in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, it's in education. And one little girl, my country was in a war. Kosovo was in a war for about three years. And I left everything here and I went back to my country. And I, uh, I always tell this story, so I want you to know. Was a little girl in a, in a weekend school, and this was in Maryland. We, will show, we were showing those pictures, the pictures of the, of the slaughtering uh, soldier, uh, the Serbian people were slaughtering Albanian uh, civilians, the soldiers. And I said, I don't want to show this to the kids, to one of the brothers in there. He said, no, brother, just show it. I said, they're too small. He said, just show it to them. Maybe this will be something that will, they will remember all their lives, and they will do better than what we did. When I start showing, I show a few. I didn't show all of them. In the end, a little girl. I don't remember her name. Inshallah, she will forgive me. But I don't, I, I, it's too long now, and probably she is a woman. She got up and she said, Brother, can I ask you a question? I said, Yes, go ahead. She said, Because I was talking about the kids, the little kids that they have no mothers, no fathers, you know, they are left alone, they cannot go to school. She said, My father. Give me five dollars for lunch today. And can I give this so you can give to one kid in Kosovo so he can eat? So all of us, in the meantime, you know, in all this, all this struggle, we have to give the best we can. Not all of us have, but whoever can should give in education is the most important thing. And I, today, here, will tell you that in Mirage Islamic School, we have fundraising dinners, and I don't know about this school, but fundraising dinners, that those, di those fundraisings keep up with the expenses of the school, not because of the tuition. Because we can never pay those teachers that your uh, brother mentioned. We will never be able to pay. Inshallah, all of us, including me that I speak, will pledge something that we will help this school to be not only a high school, inshallah, a college. Assalamu alaikum today. I have been asked to summarize what our speakers just said. A lot of good things have been said. First speaker, Brother Bukhari said about the three generations and how they behave in countries like here. It was heartwarming to know that the research shows that the third generation is coming back generation. I have questions about it, if it's true and how true it is, and how many people it applies to. I do not day-to-day -day see in my non-Muslim friends. They are concerned that they are losing those generations. He also emphasized the family issues and how that we used to think there are no family issues and turned out to be almost every family has some issue and as Muslims, leaders in community centers and in masajids, 
schools, we need to address them. Then our brother, Dr. Talat Sultan, he talked about the importance of Islamic schools very eloquently. He also said something which can be considered very controversial, particularly if the same things are said in a public which is non-Muslim. Him saying that I may be stretching the idea that non-Muslim schools, uh, they create followers, not leaders, and that particularly in public schools, they do not learn what life is all about. I have been to those schools, talked to them for all different kinds of reasons, and read their missions. I don't see it that way. In any case, he very nicely talked about integrated curriculum, meaning math, science, everything, Islamization of it, and this is what I see very definitely <coughs> in this school, Tarbiya. Then our sister, Sadia, she talked about how to identify leaders. And everyone knows about the first type of leaders. These are, sister, coming from psychological end, these are usually the firstborn children. They are pushy, they are bossy. More than 60% of the president of this country have been firstborns. And then those who you said who create harmony, these are usually the middle children. There's a lot which has been written about that. But yes, they both can be leaders in their own ways. And then she talked about how as parents we can be barriers. I myself have given talks on negative parenting meaning that we can criticize our children in such a way which will be harmful for them. And towards the end, she talked about this formula of developing leaders by passion, by recognizing their gifts, and creating a sense of uh, fun and fro profitability in what they do. After that was our brother Salman Sheikh, who talked about our children being our investment, and that it is the best investment we can do if we pay full attention to our children, and that our responsibility as parents, particularly the role of mothers, there is no question about it. As a child psychiatrist, I can endorse that every single day I see the display of what has been said in Islam, which is roughly I translate it to my non-Muslim families that I treat, that the role of Muslim, I mean the role of a woman, a mother, is three to four times more than that of a father. You can argue with me as long as you want, I can keep going on that argument. Then, the way he talked about simplicity and two new ideas which have not been tried, which is a Juma in high schools and after school Islamic education. Those are two wonderful ideas. We also heard from our brother Ramiz. He talked with passion from his heart. If I keep start telling you personal examples in this community, I don't want to bore you. But those of you who were here before the masjid, first masjid was built, you know it, how we did it. Very, very similar example. We said, here are these people, brothers. Do we want a masjid? We are one of the perhaps two states, Delaware and Alaska. No masters. Do we really, really want? Do we have the commitment? Come whatever may, we will be there. At that time, small community, 350,000 dollars. Very sisters, those of you who don't know or have not have heard, Less than one year, God helped us create that amount of money. And you all have been to that masjid many times. <coughs> we also heard about the importance of the Islamic education from him. And no question about the fundraising. That is the only way we can compensate what comes from tuition. 
My own grandchildren are in Islamic schools, and every day I hear about that. They are paying from five to ten thousand dollars. Still, it's not enough. New Jersey State just issued a memo saying that a public school student from government is getting twenty thousand dollar per student. So, how much can we really, with that five thousand or ten thousand, can we do? Brother mentioned about simplicity. No question. By doing that, by having devoted people, but definitely fundraising. Without money, nothing much can happen. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, who am I to, to say anything following uh, any of this? Uh, I don't have the credentials. I'm still an undergrad. I'm an American. And I look around the room and I don't see very many faces that are. Now, not all of us may be American here, but your children are. And the brothers are making the point that their generation after them will be I don't have the patience or the stomach for a lot of talk. I get bored easily when things that are very simple are overcomplicated. I don't have the attention span to, uh, to make speeches. And this is very similar to the way your children are. I'd rather be outside playing myself. But what's important is that I might be able to say a few things from my gut, not from my postdoc studies that might ring true. And if they're good, then mashallah, inshallah, you take them and you do something with them. And if not, then, you know, you'll do better. First, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. That's it, period. That's it. That's leadership. It's done. You have the Quran, you have the Hadith. You don't have to need, you don't need a road map more explicit than that. Do it. Get up and pray. Two, don't lead. Do something. Stop trying to lead. Stop trying to inculcate the nurturing aspect of the future generation. Just do something. Pray five times a day. Make your fast. Give zakat. Go to hajj if you can. Be hospitable to people. Use good manners. Don't talk down to your wife. Help your children with their homework. Get a good job and give something out of it, period. Just do that. Just do what you have to do every day. And the people whose hearts Allah turns to the truth are going to follow you naturally. That's leadership. That's it, period. It's done. The shahada and doing something. Third, charity begins at home. Charity is not the international society of the whatever, whatever, humanitarian. No, you can't fix what's happening halfway around the world. Yes, our hearts go out to them, but your job is your house. Clean your house. Don't say we have to pattern ourselves after the international conference of such and such. These things are not nice to hear, I understand that. But this is the reality, and this is what you're facing, because I'm basically what you're facing in this country. Fix your house. Teach your kids. Be good to the people that are good to you. Be good to the brothers and sisters that teach your children if you can't do it yourself. Because they are doing your job for you. Last, nextly, uh, quantity is not important. Quality is. Period. Even among your own family. All your children and every, all of your relatives are not going to listen to you. You can't help them. Help yourselves, help the people closest to you. And last, keep it simple. If you feel a need to plot out chart points and bullets of exactly the different aspects of the plan that we're going to facilitate, da, 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 as soon as you hear yourself thinking in that manner, you've made it overcomplicated. Keep it simple. 
it's true, if you want a good teacher, then perhaps you need to fund somebody who's going to get their master's in teaching, and they're going to take it a little bit further and maybe get some special certification in special ed. That's not important. What's important is that you pick up the child's book that day, right then, when you get the idea that your children should have better teachers. You pick up the homework and you try to understand it. I understand that a lot of people that are here today have a deep emotional commitment in their children's education. But I also understand that not everybody here today has the same level of education that we hope for our children to one day have. And that's important. Not everybody that's a parent in the school can interact with the school on the computer system. So what you need to do is put a law first. You need to get up and do something. You need to give how and when it counts from yourself. And you need to keep it simple. If you want to know where the money is, you've got it already, period. Everybody knows the hadith, the man saw the rain cloud watering a garden in the desert. He eventually got to the man and asked, how do you have this successful garden? And the man said, I give a third in charity. I feed my family with a third and I put a third back into the garden. Who's got the guts to give up a third of what they've got? Period. Now everybody says, oh brother, that's not possible in this day and age. We do. It is possible if you do it. Allah is the provider, and He is the source of sustenance. It's not panel discussions. It's not me, and it's not you. Allah provides it, and He will make it happen, period. So, what are you going to do after a day like today? Are we going to say, oh, well, I heard some inspiring things. We did hear some inspiring I heard some inspiring things. It's good. But what are you going to do about it? What are you going to get up and do? And that's the leadership. The leadership is what you do with the ideas that Allah puts in your breast. Your children are your future, your women are the backbone of the community, and your job is to work. That's it. You're not in it for glory. And if you are, you're going in the wrong direction. And you're leading in the wrong direction. Get up and build your school. Your knuckles are going to get bruised and bloody, and eventually your children are going to have the, the education and the goals and aspirations that you, inshallah, pray for them every day. And we can do it. You can do it individually, and you have to. We have to. Because if you don't, someone else will. So, inshallah, uh, I think that uh, the, the other brothers are going to open it up, and, uh, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you. Jazakallah khair. These are, these are very simple things and, and very workable things. Jazakallah khair. Uh, uh, I would like to thank all the panelists for their valuable insights. Um, let me open the panel uh, for, uh, for a panel discussion. We'll, we, we have about uh, 20 minutes uh, to go. Uh, I'll request that, uh, that you ask one question or one comment, and uh, please limit that to, to a minute so that we can have more people talking about uh, giving their insights. And if there's nobody else, we'll come back to you and we'll give uh, it was a very nice discussion. Uh, my question, uh, attending the morning session uh, from Dr. Zahid Bukhari uh, about the leadership and again uh, to this session, uh, he presented a nice uh, statistics about the mosque in the U.S. Is anything have been done for Islamic school, U.S.-wise? That's the first thing. Secondly, maybe Dr. Talat or Dr. Zahid can address the question, if anyone wants to start uh, Islamic school, do we have like a pattern, the, the, the efforts they have been made already, so it will be easy for curriculum-wise, for other activities, this kind of things. And if you need any support, uh, do we have any existing model or do you feel the need? So this way, it's easy to start the uh, Islamic school. Very good. Dr. Talat, uh, Dr. Bukhari, and then I would like to give uh, Amna a minute as well to respond to this particular question. But go ahead, Dr. No, just, just one sentence. No, I, I don't have any knowledge of any uh, systematic study done on the Islamic school in the U.S. Yeah, in fact, uh, as I pointed out, my uh, hypothesis, uh, and I think it's correct, is that the problems we have had in the past were because of the fact that we didn't have Islamic schools. 
And now that we have the Islamic schools, inshallah, their impact uh, ought to be judged. Uh, some, a study was made a long time ago uh, by uh, ISNA um, of uh, the Islamic schools and their uh, achievements. But that was at very initial stages at the end of the uh, uh, 1980s. Uh, now we need to make another study uh, further to it. Uh, to really judge and evaluate the work of Islamic schools which have been established. As far as uh, what uh, the package, uh, unfortunately I don't know, I do not know any package which is available. Yes, uh, if you go to Google and uh, uh, you can get a lot of information, uh, definitely, uh, but uh, really what uh, my plan uh, which I had uh, formulated in 1980s uh, was to have a system, a national uh, system which will come up with this kind of models which could be duplicated uh, throughout the nation. But uh, it hasn't really come up. We haven't come up with something like that. Uh, May Brother Salman, uh, mashallah, has had experience establishing a, a school from scratch. Uh, you can give you some idea. Uh, yes, there is help available. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, there are two ways of doing it, inshallah. One is that uh, there's a network of Islamic schools, uh, Islamic Schools League of America, and they have a very informal network, network of emails. Uh, I know Dr. Amna is on it, I'm on it, and there's many, many Islamic school people on it. So if you need some ideas, uh, what as simple as what should a staff manual look like, what should an admission form look like, what should this, that you just shoot an email, somebody else replies, and it all helps each other. The problem with, uh, we had an issue with bullying, I sent email, someone replies. So there is a network which is very, very useful. So anybody who wants to join can join that. Secondly, not everybody has the capacity to establish a full Islamic school, but they can start a network homeschooling. And for that, uh, Bethlehem Academy has helped at least seven schools start up. They started up with some, some few families, and now some of them are like aspects of the full, full school. Uh, they are mostly in New York. So we can help in that fashion also to network of schooling, new schools to sprout up, inshallah. Uh, Amna, would you like to? Um, just this wanted to relate back to the, we had a teacher's conference with Dr. Talas Sultan, and he said that we as, as, a, as a school or as a community, we need to see who our learners are, what our resources are, and, and, and design something that is applicable to those learners. Maybe your community is very different from ours. Maybe ours is more, more African-Americans. What if they have more Sudanese or more South Asians? How can we get our uh, Islamic school towards those, those learners? Because in essence, we are, not, we are not packaging something or we are not standardizing something. We are giving, uh, we are providing learning for students and that has to be on their level or there has to be something that they can um, understand. I mean, if we talk to a child, we have to come down to the level and talk to them. We cannot talk to them as an adult. So we have to see what our learners are and what we can, what their values are, what their culture is, and then give them give them that that, that perspective. About the school uh, studies, any, any studies, There's, systematic studies? That uh, not that I know of, but there, there, there was once that one study that was done on the finance, financial aspect of, of uh, Islamic schools. And fundraising. That was fundraising, fundraising, and, fundraising yeah. and financial aspect that has recently been conducted by the Islamic School League of America. That's correct. Uh, uh, Dr. Omar, I'll come back to you. Uh, Brother Iqbal, number two. always a You know, one thing uh, from my particular experience, uh, what I have seen, uh, of course, you know, this morning we discussed and we said that comparatively, you know, we are like a new community, you know, we, we are not, you know, still established, we are still learning a lot of things. But there are a lot of Islamic organizations has been established. And one thing, you know, bothers me the most is, I mean, I'm involved with these things for about 35 to 40 years in this state. And... Uh, what I see is, out of all these 40 years or 35 years, we haven't been able to create a one single born or trained 
you know, students or anybody from the community, they come and they work with, you know, this so-called you know, Islamic organization. And uh, we try to even, you know, get them your way. I analyze, you know, But uh, we haven't been able to now. I don't have much experience with the school. You think that we are going to follow the same model, you know, for our children, you know, where they are, you know, all us, you know, coming from, you know, I mean, we are all immigrants and coming from overseas. We are going to be again you know, involved, like, you know, have always in our power, you know, everything what we want to do rather than giving them opportunity because we are pretty good in talking how to create our leaders. But have we really seriously you know, considered that what we are saying is it just to you know, satisfy that you know, we will go to Jannah because you know, this way you know, I'm doing a service to Islam or it is a really basic, and I think you know, the basic necessity is to train our young people. I, I don't know you all are experts, I'm not an expert, but it bothers me always. Uh, I think uh, you, you, your point on uh, that, that all the communities that you're building, the power structure, power struggle is among the people who are from from my or my older generation. Uh, we have not been able to attract, uh, as community, the, the young blood, the, the, the youth, uh, the, the second generation Americans. Uh, and uh, it also goes for uh, for converted Muslims, that that it's very difficult because they don't see the connection, and they, they see that you know this is this is politics and uh, and that power structure uh, harms a lot of good things that could have been done. So it is it is a big challenge. I like to know Salim. Yes, Salim What is your It is a big challenge, but uh, my experience tells me that when it comes to a larger communities where there are more Muslims available. Uh, you have young people uh, certified uh, who are willing to teach in an Islamic school. Uh, 